Okay, good morning. Welcome back. First of all, let me start by saying I do have the southern crud. It is sweeping the nation down here in the deep south, Texas and other places. Uh, so you have to forgive my voice, but that's not going to stop me from getting this video out, I promised. Uh, first, I want to take a moment and thank you, the audience, for the kind comments. I've received a ton of comments about these videos, about the channel. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, it, it means a lot to me, uh, to my family, uh, to everyone that, you know, we're able to help people and that these videos are out there to help you train and to get better at our craft. You send me comments, make me better at my craft, and uh, we can both together do what we enjoy and love. And that is right, good software. So thanks a lot. So let's get to it. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to debug here and we're going to start without debugging. I did leave the login stuff here for you to make it easier. And we're going to go on in and we're going to talk today about what shows up in this main panel when I click on this and click on a report. We show the report and you'll notice we've got a little print screen button up here if you click it. We show the print preview report where you can print if you want to. You can maximize it. You can do all kinds of cool things. Uh, so we're going to close that. But that's what we're going to talk about today is this little control. Shouldn't take very long because it's really simple. So let's get to it. First of all, it's in the user controls folder. Okay. And you'll notice a new folder called resources. If you're not familiar with the resources dialog for a project, it's under the resources.resx file. You can double click it. And over here on the left, you've got a button, which is a drop down. You've got images, icons, strings, things like that. Uh, what ends up happening is it gets stuck in your app.config. But it's a good place to stick images. Uh, you can drag and drop onto the surface that you want to use and buttons and various things like that. And it'll take care of making sure those images get to where they need to be when you build your release views and, and other views like that. So resources.resx is a good, good thing. Okay, so let's look at our report entry. You'll see that I've got a standard user control, but it's got a bunch of junk on it that you notice you didn't see when it rendered. Well, I've got a print preview dialog, which is the dialog that you see when you click the print button. It's the one that actually pops up and you got the form on it, it's got the print button on it, and the zoom button, and page, you know, how do you want to see it, pane to pane, page after page, various other things like that. Okay, unprofessional moment there for a minute. I got my phone rang, and it was the wife, so you always have to answer the phone when the wife rings. We all know that. Um, so we were talking about this control here, the print dialog. When you print it, it pops up. Uh, shows this print preview dialog. We've got a tool strip, which is the actual container for this button, which if we look at this button, it's nothing but a standard tool strip button, which is selectable in this drop down where we select button. And in that button, we went and we selected its image. And if we go over here, I can show you that its image. We click this box and it said project resource file. Remember that handy dandy resx file. And we selected the 24 by 24 printer. And so now we have a printer showing in our dialog box. It's pretty nifty. And I renamed it button print instead of tool strip button one, which is uh, something I noticed that the context menu showed when we moused over it. So let's fix that to print. Okay. So now we will look at the print document. What is the print document? Well, the print preview dialog by itself is nothing but an empty husk. It doesn't have a document to show the user to print. So we need to take the text that's in that text box on the uh, screen, which is behind here, this white area you see behind it. Uh, this just a standard Windows rich text box. And we need to take the string that's in it and somehow get it into this print preview dialog. And the way we do that is with a print document. And so all we're doing is we set the print preview dialog, we set its 
document by clicking here to the print document one. This print document one has an event called print page and we're going to double click that print page and this is what fires when you hit print on the print preview dialog. So it's kind of an interesting way the way the print preview dialog and the print page work together, the print document as it were. So let's talk a little bit about that. When we first show this user control, they're going to pass, if you'll remember from the uh, user control that shows the reports, when you click a user report, what do we do? We pass up the actual report object. And so here we're just bubbling that report object down to the uh, user control here. And we're saying, look, we've got this utility class, and I'll show you that in a moment, that converts that data transfer object into a string. And it also accepts a Boolean value whether or not you want to double space between properties. And that's it. that's pretty simple. We set the text and render the uh, the text in the control. And that's done on the main form. When we add this control to the panel on the split pane, which you can see, it's not. Uh, we'll look at it at the end of the video, but you can see that happen. This gets fired, and away we go. And so what happens is when they click that print button, we name the document status report. Uh, we could have kept a reference to the actual report entry data object coming down. But if we think about it, that data transfer object's got a date. It's got some report information on it. There's nothing really too useful about the document. Um, so we just call it status report. I guess we could have put uh, the date we could have kept a pointer, I guess, to the date, um, but that's already in the string for the overloaded report, so there's no reason to put it as a title. Uh, the report entry that's showing on the screen contains a date, right? It contains a date it was entered, and it contains the date uh, that it was uh, work was done. So I guess we could, uh, if we wanted to, we could come in here. And I'm going to do a little coding on the fly, which is not normal for my videos. But we're going to go ahead and go in here. And I'm going to take a little creative liberty here. And I'm going to do this. Um, print it on. And I'm going to do datetime.now. There. Now it'll say it, when it was printed, that's the name of it. And we'll put the parenthesis in here. And we'll be good to go. There. Now we've got a document name that, well, you know, it's good enough. <laughs> and then we show the document preview. And when we show that, you know they get the pop-up there that's got the printer and, and all of that where they can print it and view it and zoom in and do all of that. That's all automated for us. The only thing we need to be concerned with is that print dialogs uh, print page event. Remember I told you about that? That's here. And I put the link to the MSDN article that covers this where you can read in great detail about how this works. But essentially what you do is it's going to look at the size of your screen and it's going to take substrings out of your text box and print them onto that document and it's going to use a black brush. You could change a color if you want, just change this brush's color. And then you could, you know, change the color of the text. It, it's, you can do all kinds of cool things here, but uh, I'm sticking with the corporate black. And uh, then we just go through and parse the string and away we go. Now my buddy Paul, who uh, I work with, he would have told me I could have used some link here to go through this string until it was empty, and he's absolutely correct. You could have used some link and done, or length, some link and done some dot any uh, and gone through the string, but we're not going to do that. This way works just fine, and it sticks with the way the MSDN article is written. But I like his way a lot too. I, uh, in fact, will probably post some of that code which I borrowed, uh, the link code. Uh, because I, it really is a neat way to go through a string. So we may do that later on in this project. So my shout out to Paul on that. 
Okay, so that's really it. I mean, this that's what's so great about doing these user controls the way we're doing them is you end up with, you know, less than a couple hundred lines of code on the user control. It's got a job, which is to show the uh, overloaded, uh, well, I shouldn't say the overloaded, but to show the string representation of the data transfer object, which well, let me take you there, I promised. I've got to remember to keep my word here. This utility class, which is in the business logic layer the utility right here you can see it and what it's got is it's got a static string convert report entry DTO to string now the obvious question you might be asking yourself is Dean why didn't you just put a two string method in the data transfer object um, if it wasn't meant to be a stupid transfer object and when I say stupid I mean its only job is to transport data not to provide functionality um, I would have done that in a business object normally but in this case it makes sense to just have a utility class that we're going to do some transformations on these data transfer data transfer objects uh, so that when you the user go in and want to do some cool things of your own to the data transfer objects you can go to this utility class write your own static functions and do whatever you want and have it all in one spot not have to go chasing down code so that's why I did it this way um, if you have better ideas or other ideas that you think we should include shoot them my way we'll put them in here but that's how I think a, a good way to do it so that's all it does is as you can see we're going through each property of the data transfer object and we are uh, just building it in a string builder do not I repeat do not use a string plus equal here uh, the string builder in this case especially where you're calling it over and over and over again is much more efficient so that's why we're using the string builder okay so that just about covers it we can go here and we can look at the uh, uh, main form I told you how we we're going to look at that right quick. Notice that Visual Studio 13 has once again put the form down in the bottom left corner for us. An undocumented feature. Yes, Microsoft does have them as well. Um, we'll go here and we'll view the code. And we will see that I have a, a couple of methods in here that when they uh, select a report, all of our custom user controls inherit from the base user control right they're all user controls so I say get the user control that's currently showing in that main panel and that returns a user control and I say get it and if it's not null get it as a report string viewer and then set the text that means it's already showing otherwise show control now what I'm going to have to do in the future is I'm going to have to as we move along with this application there could be other controls showing right so I'm going to have to check types and various things like that and see is it in fact the user control I'm looking for which in this case is the report control the report utility to string viewer if it's not I'm going to have to what remove it and then add the new report string viewer but for now to keep things simple let you slowly digest this we're gonna leave it the way it is and we're just gonna have this single control in there and not change its function at all and the show control we just clear the controls out of the control and add uh, the new control that you've sent down so it's not magic so that covers the adding of the overloaded to string and let me show you one more time uh, what I changed because some people are going to say you said context menu and it was showing wrong what did you mean uh, this when I put my mouse over it now it says print instead of tool strip button one and that's a lot more elegant and that's what we want so hopefully this video helped uh, hopefully you learned a little bit and I certainly welcome your feedback and I do ask you to click that subscribe button to help support the channel help support these videos 
and continue checking back. We put two or three videos up a week. We're pretty good about it. And the next thing that we cover is going to be the add and edit video reports. Or not add and edit video reports. The next thing we're going to add is the add and edit report entries page. So be sure to check back and thanks for stopping by.